The Senior Center is the place to help us live healthier and live happier. Join us for Tech Tuesday, classes to get moving, and monthly Stay Healthy seminars. It's all happening at the Center. Thank you all for coming out this afternoon for our uh, health program this month. We have with us Doug Panto, who is going to be talking about healthy living for your brain and body. So without further ado, uh, Doug, take it away. Thank you all so much for coming today. Um, this is uh, really exciting. We're gonna talk a little bit about Alzheimer's disease and then we're gonna talk about ways to maintain your brain. Um, and it's all gonna be part of taking care of your brain and body. Now, when it comes to the word dementia, dementia is a word that means loss of mind. Alzheimer's happens to be one disease that causes that loss of mind. There's other diseases and ailments out there that can cause loss of mind. Um, Parkinson's, Huntington's, um, there's deep depression, extreme stress. There's different types of dementias that are out there. We often tell families, if you hear the word dementia come from the doctor's mouth, the next question you should ask is, what type? And why do you think that's important? Why do you think it's important? Exactly. Each one has their own treatment plan. You want to make sure you're treating the right disease with the right treatment. The medications that are associated with Alzheimer's may not help someone who's suffering from dementia due to mini strokes because it's not going to stop them from having those mini strokes. So you want to make sure you're treating the underlying cause. But again, it's not a diagnosis in and itself. It's just a, a word that describes a bunch of symptoms or a group of symptoms. And those symptoms, and you can see here, dementia is just, it's an umbrella term. There's different types of dementias that are out there. Alzheimer's just happens to be the number one or, or the biggest type. These are the symptoms of when it comes to dementia. But when you look at this, don't get scared. Because <laughs> I could tell you, I have about three, four of those things, but I don't have dementia. <laughs> we all have memory loss every now and then. Forgetting where you placed your keys is not an issue. Okay, right there. That's not the issue. It's when you have your keys and you don't know what they're for. That's where the issue comes in play. Okay, so memory loss, it's to the very extreme. This is to where life events have slowly been wiped away, such as um, you don't remember um, uh, events, uh, big events, such as getting married, having children. Um, grandchildren. That's, that's uh, those life events that are slowly wiped away. Impaired abstract thinking or the inability to follow steps in a process um, can be qu quite challenging as well, but oftentimes, it, especially a, a healthy individual, they can remember, oh, I forgot a step. Go back, add that step in, and continue on. A person with Alzheimer's or with dementia, they're not going to be able to do that. They won't even realize they forgot a step in the process. I was a caregiver for my grandmother who had Alzheimer's disease, and I considered her one of the best pie makers out there. My favorite pie that she made was rhubarb pie, straight rhubarb, none of that strawberry rhubarb stuff. But um, until one day, her rhubarb pie didn't taste like rhubarb pie anymore, and it was because she was forgetting certain steps in the pie making process, and it just was not coming out right. Decreased problem solving ability. Oftentimes, if we misplace something or if something's wrong, we can rationally think it out to try to find a solution to that problem or backtrack to find out where we left an item. A person with Alzheimer's, they have a hard time doing that. They cannot um, uh, uh, process um, what's happening and, and why it's happening. And a good, a good scenario for that was my grandmother used to call me the thief of the house because she always thought I was stealing her pocketbook, when in actuality it was her hiding it from me and forgetting where she put it. <laughs> um, so that, that's where that um, decreased problem solving ability comes in. Poor judgment, we all have that every now and then, but this is to the very extreme. This is to where if it's 100 degrees outside, someone with dementia may go outside with their parka, earmuffs, scarves, gloves, not realizing that's not the correct attire to wear in that weather. You have confusion. This is extreme confusion. This is to where you, it, usually when it comes to a person with dementia or with Alzheimer's, they have a hard time remembering what happened yesterday or what happened just a, a few hours ago. But they can remember everything in the past. And a good way to look at that is think of life as a rainbow. 
One end of the rainbow, you have birth. The colors of the rainbow are all your memories, all your experiences, everything you ever learned throughout your lifetime, starting from childhood, going on to grade school, high school, college, getting married, having children, all the way up to your elder years. When someone has dementia, especially Alzheimer's type, those memories slowly start to erase, starting from um, your elder years going all the way back to childhood. So events, life events that are slowly being erased are the most current events that are slowly being erased. It got to a point to with my grandmother, she did not recognize me as her grandson anymore because that's where she was on her memory timeline. But it came to a point to where um, I, I did what everyone else would do. I tried to correct her and say, I'm your grandson, I'm your grandson. But all I was causing was more anxiety because she was so confused with those memories being lost that in her timeline, she didn't have grandkids. So how could I be her grandson? So I had to just be that guy in her eyes. Yes, ma'am. So did you call her grandma? Or I called her grandma, but I, that also caused a lot of confusion for her too. And I saw be bad behaviors come uh, because of that. So I ended up, it, we were on a first name basis and it was okay. Um, and, and she was happy with that. I was happy with that, though relatives were not happy with that. <laughs> um, but they weren't the ones caring for her. So you have to do what you're, if you're a caregiver, you have to do what's going to work for you in those situations. Communication difficulties where forgetting certain meanings to words become very challenging. Um, even letters and numbers become challenging, not remembering what those symbols mean. Um, and so writing their own name can be rather challenging because they can't remember the different symbols. Um, and that's the, the very extreme when it comes to communication difficulties. Impaired mobility happens as well, where shadows start to play tricks on the individual's mind. Depth perception can be an issue, um, where they can't tell walking over a threshold if it's a step up or a step down, and oftentimes the person will try to overcompensate, and that's where you have fall risk that may happen as well. So that's where that impaired mobility can come in play. And then cognitive impairment, where your cognitive abilities, your, your thinking process is really infected. So what is Alzheimer's disease? It is a progressive brain disorder affecting memory, thought, behavior, personality, basically our everyday living. Um, it interferes with our everyday living. It's the most common form of dementia. It is not a mental illness, even though if you think about it, what, about 15 years ago, they weren't even calling it Alzheimer's disease. People were calling it something like senility, hardening of the arteries, things of that nature. We now know that Alzheimer's is a disease. It is not a mental illness in and itself. It is not a normal part of aging. We don't just grow old and develop Alzheimer's disease. Though, most individuals that have Alzheimer's are over the age of 65. Age is the greatest risk factor when it comes to Alzheimer's. The older we get, the more at risk we are for developing um, some form of dementia, if not Alzheimer's. But it is not a normal part of aging. The only identifying risk factors, age and family history. If you had a family member that had, it in, in, um, had Alzheimer's disease, you're more at risk versus someone who's never had it in their family history, if that makes sense. And then it is progressive, and right now it's incurable. There are medications that may help with the symptoms, but they do not stop the disease from progressing. Um, and that would be your Aricept, Exelon, Cognex, Reminil, Nemenda, those medications. They help with the symptoms, but they do not alter the course of the disease. It still progresses. So how do you stop all that from happening? Basically, there's studies going on, life studies, where you need to take care of your body, take care of your brain, try to live that healthy lifestyle, and you can keep your body and, and brain as healthy as possible for as long as possible. And there's more studies being done now. There's actually currently studies being done um, locally when it comes to lifestyle. Uh, but you want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. And how do you do that? Well, for one, you want to make sure you're controlling your numbers. Not your phone number, not your social security number, but your cholesterol, your weight, your blood pressure. You want to make sure you're controlling those. If you have to take medication to keep those in the normal limits, make sure you're taking those medications. If you feel you're having um, side effects or symptoms from taking those medications, always make sure you're talking to your provider about that. But you want to make sure you're controlling your numbers and trying to find what's going to work. 
What's good for your heart is also good for your brain. So you, you're starting to hear about heart healthy foods out there. You want to make sure you're eating healthy. We become such a lazy society to where we want fast food. The convenience of having a fast food is, is just makes it really uh, easy. But we want to make sure we're incorporating some of those home cooked meals, especially vegetables, those dark green vegetables. The things we didn't like as children are actually very good for you. They're high in antioxidants, which is great for your brain and for your body. So you want to make sure you're, you're eating healthy. Limit your consumption of saturated fats and cholesterols. I love French fries and I have to curb myself. And um, you always hear, especially with potato chips, you can't just eat one chip. You want to make sure you're trying to limit yourself. Moderation is the key. If you're going to eat things like this, you want to make sure in moderation. You don't want it to be an everyday staple you're having burgers and fries. That's not going to be very healthy for you. You want to make sure it's in moderation. As I mentioned before, your dark skinned vegetables, they're really good for you. Your spinach, kale, um, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and then also your fruits are very good for you. Prunes, raisins, um, all of your berries, plums, oranges, very good for you. Um, and if you can incorporate those in your daily meals, um, you're, you're doing really good. Another thing, stay physically active. This doesn't mean join a gym. Anything that's going to get your heart rate going is going to be beneficial. You want to keep your circulation, your body circulation going. And um, you can do simple exercises such as walking, swimming. If you do sports like golfing or tennis, those are very good as well because it keeps your heart rate going. So you want to make sure you're, you're doing as much as possible to keep your heart rate going, but also to keep your, your body movement going. Um, there is such a thing, uh, you probably heard that saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's so true. So you want to make sure you're using um, what you're capable of doing. If you are doing exercises, it's great to do it with another person. Because then, both of you, uh, you can socialize when you are doing those exercises. And it makes it fun. You want to make sure whatever you're doing is fun. It's not a burden. Um, if it becomes a burden, you're not going to want to do it. But also, exercise doesn't have to be traditional. You can do other things. Uh, tai Chi, martial arts, gardening. Believe it or not, cleaning house is actually great exercise. Um, and, and yes, dancing as well can be great exercise. But people laugh about cleaning house, but when you're moving from room to room, oh gosh, that is, I can work up a sweat just doing that. So um, it is actually great exercise. You also want to make sure you're stimulating your mind keeping your mind stimulated. Science has found out that we, don't, we, can, we lose neurons in our brain, however, we still build them as well. Our body doesn't stop building neurons. It was once thought that at a certain age, you, your brain just stops growing, and that's not the case. You can keep growing your brain and keep those neurons going, but you have to stimulate your mind. Learning something new can be very beneficial. Um, and I have some quick exercises here that I want you all to participate in, okay? This is the test part of the presentation. Now, we're gonna find the hidden meaning in certain phrases. For example, the hidden word or the hidden phrase with Gun Jr. What do you think that would be? Gun Jr., son of a gun. So, that's kind of an example of this. It's going to get your brain going. Some of these are hard. Some of them are very easy. But if you know the answer, just shout it out, OK? So here's another one. Getting a close, close. Getting away from it all. Very good, very good. And you can see that. Getting is away from it all. <laughs> Very good. Here's another one. <laughs> Look both ways. I know, that was a little tricky. That was a little tricky. How about this one? This one should be easy. Fool's gold, exactly. Fool's gold. How about this one? This one should be an easy one. 
Uphill struggle. Uphill struggle. Very good. Very good. What about this one? Another easy one. Multivitamins. Multivitamins. <laughs> Correct. Correct. A little challenging. Are you ready? Are you ready? Very good. Very good. Here's another one. Uh, under CK. Under CK. Very good. <laughs> under CK. <laughs> See, I can, I can hear your brains going. It's, the motor's running. How about? One way. Very good. The underdog. The underdog. Very good. <laughs> what about this one? Downtown. Downtown. That was quick. Very good. How about this one? What was that? That is correct. Fast food. 100 mile per hour burger. <laughs> what about this? All grown up. Grown up. Very good. Very good. Grown up. You got to do some thinking for this one. A paradox. <laughs> what about this? A little more thinking. Odds and ends, very good, very good, odds and ends. This one should be easy. Neon lights. <laughs> what about this? What's that? Fish in a pond, but what kind of fish? Big fish. Big fish and a little pond. There you go. There you go. Once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. Very good. Very good. And the last one. Someone said it. Say it out loud again. Robin Hood. That's correct. You have Rob in. But those are just some teasers, some, some brain teasers that can be very helpful in keeping your mind active. And you can, there's so many different teasers out there. And don't be, don't be discouraged if you didn't get any one of them. <laughs> um, you know, but you want to make sure you're thinking things through and teasing your mind, stimulating your mind. And this is just an easy way to do so. And you see how doing it with someone, uh, having a crowd, can be very, it's fun. It makes it fun doing it. So if you don't like doing exercises like this by yourself, do it with someone else. Um, there, I always hear, oh, I do crossword puzzles, so my brain must be okay. Crossword puzzles are great. You have to think, for, uh, think of the answers and whether it goes up, down, and all the letters for it, and it's a great exercise. But that's only one exercise. You want to make sure you're stimulating your brain and teasing your brain with many different things, many different exercises, especially something that you don't, won't norm, normally do. Um, for example, if you normally read um, romantic novels, try something just a little bit different. Try to read a different type of novel. Um, that way it, it may get your brain going in, a, in thinking a different way. Um, but you want to make sure you're stimulating your mind. You can take a class. Reading books is very good for you. Playing cards or games. Crossword puzzles, yes, but not just that. You want to make sure you're, you're stimulating your mind with different things. Attend lectures and plays. Learn something new. Um, matter of fact, if you want to learn more about Alzheimer's, 
there's a, a flyer that's out um, on the back table with classes that we're doing that are free at Tab Library. And we're also doing some at Yorktown Library as well. So um, if you want to learn more, you can always attend lectures or plays, classes. Um, gardening can be very powerful too. And then learning a foreign language or just learning something new. Um, when I started working for the association, I wanted to learn how to play the guitar. And I wish I learned a long time ago because my fingers just not, did not want to do what my brain was telling it to do. But I got very good at it to where I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb very well. <laughs> so you, you want to make sure you're, you're learning something new and trying and keep trying. Now taking care of yourself, your well-being. Having a purpose in life can be very helpful. Social connections are very important. There's a lot of study being done about that lone wolf individual that doesn't like to socialize, that stays at home, doesn't go anywhere. Those individuals end up getting sick more often or hospitalized more often versus the social butterfly that's out in the community doing things. So there's a lot to be said about socialization, but social connections are very important. Having friends, having someone you can talk to, having that support system that's gonna help push you to do certain activities or to do those word games, to do those exercises, exercises um, can be very beneficial. Activities that involve the brain, body, person, um, it, it, there's big bonuses. You can't just do one thing and say, okay, I had my piece of broccoli, so I must be okay for the day. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You have to continuously do these things and, and try to incorporate it into your daily life. Ways to stay socially active? You can stay active in, in a workplace if you're still working. Volunteer in the community or groups. Join clubs such as bridge clubs, square dancing, or any other social group that's out there. Exercise or play sports with someone else. Traveling as well can be very beneficial. So you want to make sure you're, you're experiencing new things and stimulating your mind. For example, have you ever seen a VW bug or boat? <laughs> You just learned something new, probably created a few neurons just by seeing this picture. So remember, it's the combination of all of it together. You can't just do one. You can't just say, I walked up two, two sets of stairs and I'm okay, I got my exercise done for the day. You have to really commit and try to incorporate it into your life. You can do something today to protect your tomorrow. Um, if you don't have any of these incorporated in your life already, make sure that you are incorporating them. Don't wait. I always hear people say, oh, I'll just, I, I can do that next week. I'll start next week or I'll start tomorrow. Those procrastinators, you don't want to be one of them. You want to make sure that you are doing the exercises. You are eating healthy. You're stimulating your mind. You're doing what you can do to have the healthy, that healthy lifestyle. If you want to learn more about Alzheimer's, you can find it on alz.org slash SIVA. I'm crazy for trying and crazy for crying and I'm crazy for loving you and nothing else matters. We're together Welcome to Tech Tuesday, a partnership with the York County Public Library and the Senior Center to help our senior patrons become more comfortable using technology. Please join us at one of our classes or stay tuned to learn more right here on WYCG TV. Hello, my name is Ashlyn Watson and I'm one of the librarians that will be helping you out at Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about how to download an app onto your device. Downloading an app onto your Apple device is a very straightforward process. Uh, you're going to start by finding the App Store on your device. Uh, it's this blue icon that looks a little bit like a triangle. So you're going to give that App Store button a click and that will open up the App Store. 
Uh, the App Store is a great tool. It has a bunch of different productivity apps and news apps. Uh, you can also find games if you're interested in that on here as well. Today we're going to be looking at downloading the Libby app though, and that will give you access to all of your library's material from the comfort of your own home. So you're going to click this search bar right here, and that will open up the search window for you. And we're going to go to this top gray bar, and here you will type in the name of the app that you're looking for, or a keyword if you're looking for an app like Sudoku. Today we're going to type in Libby, since we're looking for the Libby app. And once we do that, we're going to click that blue search button. And right here, we've got the Libby app. So when you tap on it, it'll pull up a window that has all of the information about the app, along with other reviews that other people have left about it. Uh, and you're going to see this blue cloud icon right here. If you give that a click, that will download the app onto your device. And once it's downloaded, it will turn into that blue open button, which you can click to open up the app. Finally, uh, after you download it, the app is going to show up on your home screen, so you can always find it later on. If you'd like to delete an app off of your Apple product, that process is easy as well. You'll locate the app on your Apple product and click and hold it for an extended amount of time, and that will open up this gray window. You're going to click this Remove App button, and you will go through the process to confirm that you want to delete it. And once you do, it will remove itself from your device. To download an app onto your Android device, you're going to locate the icon called the Play Store. It's a little triangle with a bunch of different colors on it with a white background. And once you find that, you're going to give that a tap and that will open up your Google Play Store. This is also a great resource for finding apps and other games uh, and productivity, but like we did with the uh, Apple device, we're going to search for that Libby app on here. So it'll pop up the search window and we will type in Libby into the search bar and then click this blue little search button down here. And that will open up the Libby app. You'll tap on that and then click this green install button to install it onto your device. And once it's installed, you can click the green open button and that will open up the app as well. Uh, if you'd like to find it on your home screen, you'll click this circle button to get back to the home screen. And then from here, if you slide up on your device, you can slide left or right through your apps to find it on your screen. And finally, if you would like to delete an app off of your Android device, you will click and hold it. Wait for this box to show up. Uh, click this X that says uninstall. Click OK. And it will remove the app from your device. If you have any other tech questions you'd be interested in getting some help with, schedule an appointment at the Senior Center of York and join us for Tech Tuesday every first Tuesday of the month from 2 to 4. And bring a list of questions about your device so that way we can help you. For more information, please call 757-890-3444 or visit our website at www.yorkcounty.gov slash senior center. We're looking forward to seeing you there.